I'm back in New York where I was originally from and it's in the it's in a big show place in New York at an IMAX theater, so it's a thrill. When you make a movie that's unusual and has never quite been made before, you tend to the movie tends to make itself, and it makes itself through the collaborators, through the actors. All of you are asking, well, let's do more of that. No, let's do more of that. And little by little, it makes itself. He says, we need a debate about the future. And we want everyone in the world to take part of that debate. And that's what this film is saying, and that's what it's, it's trying to do. I was working on really just understanding what kind of style I might have. And before I came to the idea to want to do an, a, a Roman epic with America as modern day Rome. He um, is a very unconventional director and he shoots in a very unconventional way his process is very unconventional his casting is very unconventional like at no point was I expecting this to be like you know a run-of-the-mill usual experience and that was definitely demonstrated in in the process of shooting it I mean we came to work and we just didn't know what was gonna happen Francis is very kind of experimental sometimes we'd be very very like particular and then other days it was like we're playing a game and now it's in the movie. Like it was very, it sort of dis it, the movie kind of discovered itself at times, and so it was like a, an experience I'd never ex had before, and you know, will probably never have again. So I'm very, um, yeah, grateful for that. I think um, what this teaches us a lot about humanity and society is that we often fall into the same habits and mistakes, and you know, that old age-old saying of like history repeats itself but it will express itself in different ways and you know there's always going to be aspects that will feel familiar you know um, but I think this movie is particularly timely because we're at a point where we're talking about things like the future of our planet the future of society who do we want to like who do we want to be and and some of these especially now like I feel like the world at times feels like it's in such a sort of like damning place like it feels like so hard at times and I'm sort of like I don't understand these things and like who do we need to be what choices do we need to make to make things better and like and I feel like this movie just really speaks to that at this time I always feel that it's a very small percentage of people it doesn't matter where you are whether I'm from the UK obviously there's a very small percentage of people who are making decisions for the masses and that really shouldn't um, I personally don't think that should be the case, but this is why we have our vote and we get to vote. In a, the, we're lucky to live in democracies where we get to have our say and we get to um, impact change. And so, you know, I wish that people felt much more empowered to do so. The movie definitely just throws up a lot of questions and doesn't necessarily always answer them. In a, in a very like clean, like, you know, bow tied, like, here you go, and fed back to you. I think it, it forces us as audience members to answer these questions for ourselves, to challenge ourselves, and, and maybe in our small way, we can affect change as we move through our lives, our little corner of the world that we live in. What things can we do differently? And I, and I felt when I finished the film the first time, I was like, wow, I feel really optimistic. And I hope young people will watch it and, be, and feel that way too, you know. I would make it absolutely law that all animals are like taken care of and we all are responsible for them, um, as well as like children. That would be like, we would all be responsible for them in like an absolute, I don't know what the law would be, but it would be really like specific. And then I would, there'd be lots of um, local gardens and vegetable patches that people can just take from and like as they please that we ho house everybody and I'd like some bedazzling somewhere just for to be cute. It's special for me I did a reading with Francis probably about 37 years ago around a table of actors and I wondered what this film was uh, it had so much to say about a time that um, has come upon us uh, the film is really a film for its time it means so much more to me today than it did 37 years ago when we read it and it is a brilliant movie about the future I play Mayor Cicero, who is steeped in an old way of thinking. Uh, he's a mayor who's come up um, through the blood and sweat of his political career, and he is a bit corrupt, 
and has old ideas and not open to the new. His daughter falls in love with Caesar, who is a new um, industrialist builder with new ideas, a man who can stop time, who uh, as a mayor of, of a city feels like this man has preposterous ideas. And through the journey of this movie, um, you know, I, Mayor Cicero, makes a transformation to understand and how he can start to accept the new world. The great debate is that we have um, failed to be able to agree to disagree. We failed to be able to come together, uh, bringing your ideas, which I may not completely understand, and my ideas, which you don't want, together to form a better idea. And this is the problem with American politics today. The film really exemplifies much of the ideas that we want to move forward and get beyond. What are we doing here? We're experimenting. What do you want? Well, I'm finding out what I want on this day. Other days you come in, he's texting me at 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning, with an idea, an idea that spurns a thought. So by the time I get to the set, I have something new to offer that both of us didn't expect. He's a wonderful filmmaker and a wonderful storyteller, and you should see this movie in IMAX right away. It was a dream come true, you know? He's a legendary filmmaker, and um, the fact that he wanted me to you know, play this part was... Uh, really insane. So, you know, I tried to soak up every minute, you know, and really um, just let it all wash over me. I think we're in a very interesting time, you know, in terms of the um, decline of humanity. So I think it's a good time for this kind of message, you know, what can save the world? There's Bob. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's Bobby. Um, De Niro. I'm very nervous. My stomach is churning, but I'm really excited and I love the movie and I'm just, I'm happy to be a part of this ride. I'm like, you know, along for it. I did not train. I winged it. I did not think about the consequences if I wasn't able to, you know, perform my promises. And thankfully it worked out. I don't know what would have happened if I wasn't able to do it, I don't know. Francis is incredible. He's a very like amazing man in general, but also his creative process is like totally, I mean, yeah, seeing it firsthand, you're like, this is definitely why you create things like that. And then when I saw the movie for the first time, I definitely was like, yeah, only Francis Ford Coppola would make this. In the best way possible, I'm so bored. Everything is so boring. Nothing's daring anymore. Everyone's so afraid of like people not liking their work or who they are. And I'm like, guys, just someone make something you love already. You know? I've thought this many times. I'm not sure if it was if it was intentional, but it is very you know uh, applicable, pliable, applicable to right now. Almost almost jarringly like it's almost like so obvious I don't know if that was intentional though I think that change is scary in general especially in a time where we need stability more than ever and it's kind of like that fork in the like there like that, that circle of a question where it's like we need change but also we need everything to stand still and that was really the controversy in this film was like it destruction is needed for rebirth and like where does that lie and like how will we deal with that you know we're kind of in new rome if you think about it um new rome definitely had a lot of new york influences so it's really exciting to get to celebrate it here in the big apple the big roman apple i play Claudia Pulcher, um, and she has these two rebellious sisters, they were around here, um, and we're sort of like uh, trust fund bad kids and we're bad influences on Natalie. Um, the movie opens with the big, you know, you see in the trailer there's a horse, we're riding a horse and we're kissing and it's very Roman and crazy and then she kind of has to struggle if she's going to be loyal to us bad girls or, you know, evolve and grow. It's super surreal. I've looked up to him my whole life and um, how kind and he's a true artist and I think that they're a dying breed of somebody who's not caught up with the studio system and just has a vision and wants to make it and he let us be artists and you're also with like, you know, some of the greatest living actors of all time. It's, it's insane. I hope that it inspires people to take risks and to have your voice and just make the art you want to make. I think that like 
you know, the industry's gone through so many changes, and I, I even deal with this on SNL, you know, it's like there's so many rules and, and like a playbook we all think we have to play, but Francis and this movie is just like, just make what you want to make, and, and there's an audience there. I hope they feel the experience of movie going, because so many people, I'm not watching movies on this. Look, all right, I'm old, but there's nothing to replace this. Your widescreen TV in the basement ain't gonna re replace seeing this film in IMAX. This guy right here, that's my guy right there. France for a cow. Francis. I was at the first screening, not not a problem, the first regular screener, Apocalypse Now in LA. I was doing an internship, Columbia Pictures, 12 noon, the Cinerama, Cinerama Dome. 12 noon, Apocalypse Now. That was, I mean, them helicopters, I was like, where the fuck is them? Where the helicopter go? Like helicopters flying over your head with the, the sound design. It was amazing. I've been very lucky to, to work with Francis, Godfather 2. So I remember Francis, uh, I was aware of it at least 30, maybe 35 years ago, maybe even longer. He was always talking about it. And then I, I went to, uh, we had a reading somewhere in a studio in Brooklyn, not a studio, but a, a loft studio type thing. Um, with Paul Newman and Uma Thurman and I'm forgetting who else, but so he's he was working on it for a long time. I forget then how it changed from what I just saw today. Excuse me, um, but it, it, you know, it obviously it was something that Francis had been wanting to do, working on for a long time in his head. Blah blah blah. You know.